750 tomorrow on KTRS. Missouri takes on Indiana. That pregame uh, starts here on the Big 550 KTRS at 5 o'clock. Speaking of college football, there is a brand new book out from Armin Kate, and you uh, remember him from 60 Minutes. Uh, he was on uh, Real Sports, HBO. He's been all over the place, uh, well-respected investigative journalist. He has a brand-new book out called The System, The Glory and the Scandal of Big-Time College Football. Armin Kotean, welcome to Big 550 KTRS here in St. Louis. Good morning. Uh, I love the part in this book where you talk about the fact that it's an arms race and that millions are being spent to outdo the other school and that very few college sports programs actually make money when it's all said and done. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? You have uh, this enormous arms race. I think Dave Brandon, the athletic director at Michigan, said it's it's literally the worst business model ever created, but schools keep pouring money into it. And, the, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is it's no longer about the football team, football programs, and they really have become these 80, 90, $100 million businesses have become really the branding mechanisms for a lot of these universities. And so they're either the, call them the front porch or the welcome mat. And they're, if you're successful, and that's what this sort of gamble is, if you're successful with your football team, the benefits can be extraordinary. Um, rapid increase in, in, um, in admissions and, and, and applications to your school, huge increase in donations. I think uh, A&M just announced that they – in the last year, raised $740 million based on what happened last year with Johnny Manziel. Like a half a, it was, I think, $500 million, a half a billion dollars more than they had ever raised in one year. So it's, it can be an extraordinary asset to a university. The problem is, is that it's expensive. You know, it's tens of millions of dollars in stadium expansions. You now have, I think, 79 coaches making more than a million dollars a year, 16 making more than $3 million, two and Mac Brown and Nick Saban making more than $5 million. So if you try this, you get at the poker table and you miss, you bust out, it has devastating, um, a devastating impact on a university. The book is called The System, The Glory and the Scandal of Big-Time College Football. The idea, Armin, was you just wanted to take a, a cross-section the good and the bad of college football, right? Yeah, Jeff Benedict, who uh, is the co-author of the book, he and I had worked together on a number of uh, things in the past, uh, particularly two big collaborations between CBS News and Sports Illustrated. One was on crime in college football. The other one was on gangs and sports. And most of those were done in 2010 and 11, and at a time in which college football was just in a just in a you know tumultuous change and in a meltdown in many ways because. There was this absolute um, abandoning of rivalries. The money was pouring in from everywhere. So we thought it was the perfect time to, to kind of take a deep dive into these programs. And what we really wanted to do, we did not want to write an expose, and it's not an expose. It's really a deeply detailed, um, it's the best reporting I've ever done on anything that takes you inside this machine uh, that has all these component parts to it, whether it's a the relationships between the tutors and the athletes or the role of the hostesses or the a director of football operations who called himself the janitor because he was responsible for cleaning up a lot of the messes at the program, uh, the story of Mike Leach and what happened at Texas Tech and his, his hiring at Washington State, uh, the sort of the magical work that's being done out in BYU by Bronco Mendenhall the, and an unprecedented look inside the process at Alabama and some unbelievable access there to help people understand and, and appreciate why Alabama is what Alabama is under Nick Saban. So we really tried to take it apart, the system apart, piece by piece, and then put it back together so in the end, uh, the reader whether or the, you know, the person at home, whether they're an avid fan or a casual fan, will have a much better understanding of what goes into that spectacle that you see on on Saturday afternoon or Thursday night or Tuesday night as the case may be now. The book is called The System. Armin Kate and our guest for a couple more minutes. I don't know why the NCAA doesn't step in and set some type of limits. Well, you know, the, the, you, the students are not allowed to be driven home by a coach after five o'clock because it's an extra benefit, but they have no problem uh, allowing that same school to build an eight billion square foot weight room. Why not set limits on the, how big the weight room can be, how much money each school can spend. 
Well, you know, it's the NCAA is, is an association run by its members. And if the members don't want it, it's not Mark Emmerich who's the president. He's not like a commissioner who can make a, you know, a unilateral decision on anything. Uh, and I don't think the, the presidents, as much as they talk about change and they talk about um, corrective action, they're well aware of the impact that a, that a successful football team can have on their university. And if they have to look a little bit to the right when things are going on on the left, uh, I think they're more than willing to do that now because these programs, um, when they hit and they hit right, they, they, they're game-changing uh, for universities. And certainly at Alabama now, under Nick Saban, their athletic department revenue has, has gone up 34% since 2007 when Nick took over. Just in the 11-12 season, the football revenue went from $52 million to $80 million. Their, their admissions now have skyrocketed. They now have 33,000 students on that campus, 51% that come from out of state. That is directly related in many, many ways to the, to the effect that Nick Saban has had at that university. So if there's got to be a little... Uh, dirt fly in the air, um, so be it if if uh, if the school can be successful on the football field. There is talk about the major, let's say, money makers or the, the top, you know, 50 breaking off and having a super division, a super NCAA, a super division one. Do you think that'll ever happen? There's a lot of talk about it. You know, there's this whole have, have not theory thing that's going on right now. My, my question is, who's going to run it? You know, they had the the College Football Association a couple of decades ago, the CFA, and they tried something similar. But, you know, the NCAA is there for a reason, and much of it is administrative. And who's going to run all that stuff? And who's going to be responsible for, you know, the rules and rules enforcement? Is there going to be any rules? Are they just going to pay the players stipends from the athletic departments? But I, I think it, I don't think it's going to happen in the near term. But what is happening now is there's certainly maybe – 12 to 15 mega programs now that are actually actually the number is 22 of the 120 that are actually making money or breaking even which tells you something you still have uh, about um, 100 other programs that are losing money and ironically you have at least 10 or 15 more universities that are now adding football programs no question they're going to be lost leaders but football has become you know, the welcome mat in the, in the front porch of these universities, it's become a branding um, exercise and, and really probably the single most important way to brand a university. So schools are willing to subsidize it, and the, much of this money is coming out of student fees that are increasing much faster than people would, would imagine. It's all in the new book by Armin Katayan, The System, The Glory and the Scandal of Big Time College Football. Armin, great work. Thanks for checking in. My pleasure. Thank you. You got it. 758 here on the Big 550 K.